<gasps> ah, just recorded this video and then forgot to press play on my audio recorder. So this is going to be very interesting. We're going to be doing this video backwards because I've already taught it apart and uh, we'll just talk about it. Okay, let's go right after this. This video is sponsored by Artlist, which is also my go to music and sound effects licensing site. Music license from Artlist is covered by a worldwide royalty free license, which includes all projects from personal YouTube videos to high end TV commercials. Once you've downloaded a song with active subscription, it's yours to keep forever. New music and sound effects are added to the site daily, so you'll never run out of choice. Now also featuring Artlist personal plan that covers all your social channels, pay monthly or save even more when paid annually. Your license lasts forever for all public projects during the subscription period and the best part is if you sign up through the links in the description below you'll get two months for free so check out Atlas in the video description below well the good thing is now we have actually b-roll you can see some b-roll what this will look like once it's built together but basically it's a very small PC and it's very very powerful like if you're looking for something for windows and something on the desk that can be super super powerful very small then this is one of those types of things and it's absolutely amazing me as a creator i am super excited about this because it's so well engineered it's so well put together and some of the features we have over here just will blow your mind because i haven't seen any other small form factor especially pre-build small factor have some of these features so let's have a look then so basically inside there we pulled out this graphics card this is an rtx 3070 it's very very uh small like you have to have a skinny graphics card in order to uh, put this in there because you only have kind of like two slots to play with in here and the cpu inside here is it says intel confidential on it but it is actually i9 12th gen 12 900 not the k version but the 12900. So I'm gonna benchmark this in another system because I wanna know how this chip performs on all of the other CPUs. I think this and one more. And then I have the whole 12th gen benchmark, like every single chip. Hit subscribe if you wanna see all of those chips in one video. I don't know how many there is, seven. Something like that, maybe even more. But basically, you're gonna take the sides off very easily with a few screws, and then you can access a few things inside here. I had the graphics card inside here, as you can see on some of the B-roll. It's very easy to upgrade, very easy to do a little bit of PC DIY. Now, I've gone a little bit overboard and actually ripped the CPU out of the socket in there, but the interesting thing is that if I open this up, if I get this, as you can see, there is a full size 12th gen socket or, you know, LGA 1700 socket, as you can see. If I open this up, you can put any CPU in there. Well, really, I'd recommend the 12900 or 12700. And these are the two models that this PC comes with. This is the, the CPU cooling, all of it. Like, this 12900 is only cooled by this little guy. It's absolutely amazing that they've engineered this this way, that this really works and actually is enough cooling for this guy over there. Now look at this, this is all copper and this is a vapor chamber over here and this kind of slots in here. I've already cleaned the thermal paste up, but it kind of goes just in there. You can see on some of the B-roll how I actually ripped it open and put it in there. But the, the really good engineering about this is that usually what happens with SFF or small form factor PC is that you don't have enough cooling room inside there and the problem is where you're gonna get cool air to come in but as you can see how this is configured this is the front this is the back you know up on this side this little guy here is like engineered geniusness this goes on top of this here and then basically this fan inside will pull the coal there from the bottom from the back over there pushes it inside the chip over there cools the ram ssds vrms and everything and then is kind of pushed out from the top on this side, as you can see. That keeps the CPU very cooled, and then our GPU gets the air from the sides because the side you know, panels are all vented. As you can see, this is the side panel. GPU will pull it in from the side and then out from the top. Absolutely fantastic. Now, another thing that sets this PC apart part from any other really like small form factor pieces is that the storage is upgradable now there is two slots 
in there and then another one on the back so we've got three slots and they're all pca gen 4 capable so as you can see it shipped with the western digital black sn 850 which is a one terabyte model and super super fast with 7.2 gigabytes per second 7.3 something like that and then there's a two terabyte western digital sn 750 so this is a gen 3 drive but you can literally just pop them in there and another slot is very easily accessible on the back of this so basically on the back of this pc you just pull the side cover up and then by doing undoing this one screw over here look at that what do we have what do we have boom another pci m2 slot another gen 3 or uh, gen 4 slot which is fantastic look at that thermal pad on and everything so easily accessible and upgradable which is huge and this is like one of the biggest things that i don't personally like about the apple products my mac studio arrived today as well we've we've done the unboxing for this have a look at this on the channel and a little like overview about this but what i don't like about that is that the storage you can't upgrade it and here we could put basically three eight terabyte drives in and get like 24 terabytes of nvme storage it's ridiculous but on apple for example you only get one eight terabyte maximum included i know they say it's it's much faster than anything else on the market up to 7.4 gigabytes per second but you know what it isn't that much better than our top end gen 4 drives and is much cheaper per terabyte if you look at i don't know western digital sn850 for example this one or kingston kc3000 or samsung 980 pro or something like that they're like over or see you get fire to 530 for example they're like 7.3 gigabytes per second so what 100 megabytes lower well, big deal. Who's going to use 7.4 or 7.3 anyway in sequential read or write speeds? It can easily be upgraded. No problem. Also, the RAM, very easily user accessible. Just literally unscrew this, pull this cover off with two screws on the top. And then you can see you've got two RAM slots. You can very easily just buy an upgrade kit and then upgrade it this up to 64 gigabytes. This model ship with 16 gigabytes but we're going to be putting the kingston fury 64 gigabytes so stay tuned for that because i'm going to be benchmarking in this with 64 gigabytes because i think a lot of creative applications 16 gigabytes of ram that's going to be the bottleneck but unfortunately there isn't ddr5 version available even though we do have ddr5 ram already and for creators it's really sometimes makes sense which would be interesting to get the ddr5 model as well at the same time i appreciate that intel has actually made ddr4 version because really the DIYers know that DDR4 is very, very affordable at the moment, meaning upgrading this very, very cheap. Talking about upgrade options, this PCIe slot over here, this blue one, is PCIe Gen 5 because the 12th gen supports PCIe Gen 5. Now, this gives you the future proofness of the future graphics card, NVIDIA 4000 or Radeon AMD 7000 series graphics cards. When they come out, then you can literally swap it in there and you have PCIe 5 support, which is very, very good. Obviously, you have to make sure that this is just two slot card because otherwise it won't go in. But in terms of the length, you can put very long cards in here. Even this gigabyte card is very, very long. As you can see, it's lengthy. Now, when we start talking about the ports, then this is where things get super exciting. If you look at the back of this like motherboard here, obviously we've got the graphics cards ports in here as well, but I've pulled the graphics card out. Depending on your graphics card, you can put like, you know, two display ports or three display ports, HDMI ports, plenty of there. But the actual motherboard also has very interesting ports. As you can see, all of these blue USB type A ports are 10 gigabit ports super fast connectivity i love it six of them nothing slow don't worry about it plus two thunderbolt 4 ports absolutely insane one hdmi port for the integrated graphics if you want to use the you know uhd 770 that's inside the chip and then two lan ports one of them 2.5 gigabits which is already quite fast and another one 10 gigabit port that's amazing especially for creators you can use your NAS to directly edit off of it. Have such a small PC on your desk. It's insane. Like I could fit about, I don't know, 10 of these inside my case. I'm running like the super large Be Quiet case. But I bet you that this is going to be faster 
than my actual PC. I'm running the 3950X Ryzen 9 RTX 3070 as well. There is 64 gigabytes of RAM as well, which this one also has, but I'm just interested to see if we compare the benchmarks of this and my PC. I bet you this much that this will be better and this is so much smaller. When we're looking at the front of the device, this is very exciting for me as well, because if you do any type of creativity with cameras or audio, you usually have SD cards and we have an SD card reader in the front here. I'm excited to test this out to see how fast this is. We have one USB type A port. I think this is only a USB 2.0 speeds. I'm not too sure, but I, I believe this is that. And then we have one like 10 gigabit USB-C port in the front as well, which is just amazing. How much ports do you need? I think this pretty much covers it all. There is also a headphone jack and mic jack combo slot on the top there as well. But looking at the size of this guy, it's amazing to have something so small. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and benchmark this 12900 because I want to get the benchmarks for this in another system where we're not limited by thermals or power limits or anything like that. So we're going to be benchmarking that behind me and then I'm going to come back, put it all back together and then we're going to actually see how good this guy is compared to some of the desktop PCs like full size towers and also the Mac Studio. Can I pull this out? This guy. Okay, how good that is compared to this one? Well, we'll have to find out. Obviously, this guy is going to be much more affordable than that one. But the question is, how far are they from each other? So if you're interested in picking this up, there's really like two models to choose from. The i7 and i9 version, 12700 and 12900 CPUs in there for the compute unit. That's there. And I think the i7 model comes in roughly around 1500 and then the i9 model comes in around 1700, which is very, very good price. Now I know that GPU isn't included and you might already have a GPU. You might want to buy a GPU extra. At the moment, the GPUs are going down in price. So if you want to pick something up for maybe an RTX 3060, 3060 Ti or something like that, you cash out extra 500, 600 quid, and then you get something for like 2200, uh, less than 2500, which is super, super powerful. So if you want to check out the latest pricing, I'm going to leave the links in the description below for you to check out. But for creators, if you want to stay in the Intel platform, have something very small, very like easily accessible, upgradable, and not have so much like DIY craziness, but still gives you a little option of, do you know what? I'm going to open the, you know, my, my PC bonnet. Let's open it up. Let's see what's inside. Okay, let's upgrade this. Let's dust it or something. You can do that if you want to. There is the option. So if you want to see more content about this, subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. I appreciate it. It actually helps out. If you're interested in specific configurations or benchmarks of this, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks guys for watching. Adios. Bye bye.